Um, so I'd like to talk today about a topic that I, it's probably my favourite hobby of all time, and that is reading. I, I don't know about you, but I've seen loads of people saying, you know, when lockdown started, they just couldn't focus on books, they couldn't concentrate on kind of anything that required brain work, their just mentality just wasn't there. But the complete opposite is true for me. Uh, at the start of lockdown, I couldn't do anything else. I couldn't focus on work. I couldn't do anything basically apart from read. In April, I read about 20 books, which is mental. <laughs> I don't know. I think it was because I had no work. So um, similarly to Nolwen. Um, but I also have recently got quite into looking at literary prizes. So kind of looking at the shortlist and maybe seeing if I could read the whole shortlist. And that's what I did with the Women's Prize, which is a prize for UK books. Um, I bought five out of the six shortlisted books and I've decided to read all of them, uh, which is quite exciting. So this got me to thinking kind of what is the point of literary prizes? Who are they for and who do they benefit? Because a lot of the time these big literary prizes the kind of very well-known uh, awards, you have to pay quite a high fee to enter them even. So publishers have to pay a big kind of fee to um, even enter their books into the prize. Sorry, I just realized I said I'd record this for Heather. I'm gonna start now. Are these literary prizes just a way to kind of exclude underrepresented authors? Are they a way to exclude authors from publishers that don't have as much money? Uh, and this is one huge controversy that's kind of hit the literary prize world recently. Um, but I'm going to be talking about specific uh, more controversies that have been affecting literary prizes lately. Uh, and specifically, I'm going to be talking primarily about the Man Booker Prize, which is a prize for books published in the UK in the English language. Now, they don't have to be originally British books. They can be from any English speaking country or any other country just published in English, um, but they have to be published in the UK as well to be considered for the prize. So this particular controversy relating to the Man Booker Prize happened in 2019, last year. Now, after a five hour deliberation by the jury members, where they were all locked in a room, they were all discussing the books on the shortlist, I believe there were six or eight books, they came up with two winners at the end and they announced that they couldn't pick just one, it had to be two. And initially, the director of the Man Booker Foundation said, please, no, please pick one. It's in our rules. Absolutely not two winners. Uh, and the jury refused. They said, we absolutely have to have two winners. Um, and the two winners that they picked were, firstly, The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. And The Testaments is the sequel, a very long awaited sequel to an extremely famous book called The Handmaid's Tale. And that book was released in the 1980s. And it's a kind of feminist dystopian book about a, uh, a distant future that perhaps doesn't feel so distant now. Uh, and the other book that was awarded the prize was called Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. And I have a copy here. Um, and the, the judges said they absolutely couldn't choose between these two books. They had to choose both. And this was obviously controversial because the, win, the, um, the Man Booker Prize decided that they couldn't have more than one winner in the past. They changed the rules in 1992 because they thought that having two winners, having two books chosen to have this to win this prize, uh, detracted from both books. Rather than drawing attention to both and making them seem as kind of equal winners. It actually made them seem as if neither had won. Uh, and this sparked an additional controversy because Bernadine Evaristo is the first black woman to ever win the prize in its entire history. Only four black women have ever been shortlisted. 
out of a total of 300 shortlisted books. So that's just a shortlist. Every year there's sort of six to eight, I think, I think it's six books that are kind of the best of the bunch. And only four women have ever been on the shortlist. Um, and Bernadine Everisto is the first woman to win this, the first black woman to win the prize. And to many people, it seemed unfair that she, as this, this amazing achievement, as the first black woman to win the prize, had to share her award with someone so well known as Margaret Atwood, so famous, um, and she completely overshadowed Bernadine Everisto's achievement. And in fact, actually, if you Google the Man Booker Prize, which I did when I was um, when I was looking researching this speech, if you look, Google Man Booker Prize 2019, the Testament, so Margaret Atwood's book, is the first and uh, only result in the first page of Google. Uh, so clearly, the concerns about uh, one book outweighing the other were were justified. Now, a further controversy uh, emerged after this because an article written by one of the jury members was released. And this jury member said they couldn't not give the award to Margaret Atwood because her career has been so eminent. She's written 30 books. She's or over 30, I think. She's so prestigious. And uh, some, the publishers of debut author Lucy Ellman, who wrote another of the shortlisted books, were completely outraged because she is a debut author. How can you possibly compete with the career of someone like Margaret Atwood? And the point of the prize is to be judged only on the book, just one book that is to compete on its own merits. So how can you judge a debut author against Margaret Atwood's career? No one stands a chance. And this, this small press, as I mentioned, they had sunk loads of money into promoting this book, into entering this book, and it was a huge financial burden for them. So they were extremely unimpressed with this. Now the Booker Prize has actually, oh, sorry, this is halfway through the speech. Cool. So the Booker Prize has been marred by more controversy this week. Um, one of the, so the vice, the honorary vice president of the prize, who is a member of the House of Lords in the UK. So this is the up, kind of upper chamber of government, uh, who is called Baroness Nicholson. She has been releasing certain tweets recently uh, against a transgender woman called Munro Bergdorf. And Munro Bergdorf is a black transgender activist and model and has been extremely vocal criticizing people who are um, who are anti-transgender basically. And Baroness Nicholson has continu continuously argued with this with Bergdorf on Twitter. She's continued to call Bergdorf a man, to call her he and him instead of she or her, which is what she prefers as a, as a transgender woman. Nicholson even called her a, a weird creature in one of her tweets. And many people were extremely outraged by this. And in fact, Baroness Nicholson is affiliated with JK Rowling with, they founded a charity together. And as some of you may be aware, JK Rowling has recently released I won't be discussing J.K. Rowling specifically, but she recently released some tweets that were construed as extremely anti-transgender. And because of her huge platform, she has millions of followers. Um, transgender people felt that this was extremely threatening to them. This was putting back their cause. Uh, and Baroness Nicholson's affiliation with J.K. Rowling was extremely problematic. And so initially, after a few days of kind of pressure from the Man Booker Foundation to uh, release a statement kind of commenting on what Baroness Nicholson had said, after three days of silence, they released a very non-committal response to this. They said that the trustees, so the administrators of the Booker Prize Foundation, um, would like to express that Baroness Nicholson's views are her own personal views, they're nothing to do with the Booker Prize. 
And in fact, Baroness Nicholson was not anything to do with governing the prize, choosing books, choosing authors or anything, or choosing judges even. So they fully distanced themselves from her. However, many people on social media decided this was not good enough. This was, she, they needed to strongly condemn her words. So after a few more days of pressure, of constant comments on, her, on the Booker Prize Instagram, on its Twitter page, on its other social media, the Booker Prize issued another statement condemning her views in much, more strong, in much stronger terms. And the trustees then decided to remove the role of honorary vice president completely. So this role that Baroness Nicholson had was completely removed. Um, and perhaps this was a kind of way of getting around having to fire her specifically, but many people took this as a win and were extremely glad. Uh, so now that I've mentioned some kind of controversies relating to the Man Booker Prize, I'd like to just quickly touch upon a few um, controversies relating to other prizes, specifically in this case, the Nobel Prize for Literature. Now, in 2016, the Nobel Prize for Literature was awarded to uh, the singer Bob Dylan, who I'm sure many of you will have heard of. And this sparked fierce debates about the meaning of literature, what constituted uh, a literary work and uh, a literary kind of author or creator. Now, as you all know, Bob Dylan writes song lyrics and many people would argue that this counts as poetry, this is the same as poetry. And many eminent poets have won the Nobel Prize in the past. However, opponents argued that it was absolutely ridiculous to award him the prize. They thought it was a dumbing down the award, that it was too broad a, a definition of literature. There, were also, there have also been controversies because of the particular views of the, the laureates of the Nobel Prize. So for example, in 2010, uh, the prize was awarded to Mario Vargas Llosa, I'm sorry, I'm definitely saying that wrong, who was criticized for his extremely right-wing political views. And critics of the prize stated that he was focusing much more on politics than he was on, on literature and that he shouldn't have been awarded the prize. It sent the wrong message that he was being supported this extremely, who had these extreme views. And another example of this is the Austrian author Peter Handke, who was joint winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2019. Another con controversy in the year 2019. Peter Handke was criticized in the past for supporting Serbia in the Yugoslav wars. And he was, he was highly criticized by many countries that have been affected by this situation. So as you can see, the controversies in the literary world have some somewhat shaken people's faith in literary prizes and in their merits in the point of them. But there are still some, some really wonderful small prizes such as awarding um, black and uh, uh, other ethnic minority authors, awarding women authors, LGBT plus authors, um, all sorts of other minorities that otherwise don't get the kind of press time that other mainstream authors do. Um, so as you can see, there are kind of two sides to this coin. Of course, controversies are marring these literary prizes. But there are certain benefits, particularly to the smaller ones, uh, of keeping them around. And despite all the criticism, it looks like they're here to stay. Thank you very much.